Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, June 6th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. The Lord had commanded the people of Israel not to make any sort of treaty with any of the nations or peoples that were living in the promised land of Canaan. The people of Israel were to completely destroy those nations and completely dispossess them. And so making a nation or a treaty with any of those nations would have certainly been counterproductive to the overall goal that the Lord had for the people of Israel. We have seen the people of Israel carry out miraculous, decisive conquest of two of the cities uh, in the land of Canaan already, Jericho and Ai. And we've already also seen that the, uh, all of the nations, all of the peoples living in the land of Canaan were terrified because they knew that the Lord was fighting on behalf of Israel and they had seen what the Lord could do on behalf of Israel. Today, a, t a city, an actually pretty major city in the land of Canaan is going to um, decide they're going to try to trick Israel into making a treaty with them. This major city is the city of Gibeon, and we're going to see what happened um, as they carried out this deception and then the results of that deception as we read Joshua chapter 9. When all the kings heard about Jericho and Ai, those who were west of the Jordan in the hill country, in the Judean foothills, and all along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea toward Lebanon, the Hethites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, they formed a unified alliance to fight against Joshua and Israel. When the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they acted deceptively. They gathered provisions and took worn out sacks on their donkeys and old wineskins, cracked and mended. They wore old, patched sandals on their feet and threadbare clothing on their bodies. Their entire provision of bread was dry and crumbly. They went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, We have come from a distant land. Please make a treaty with us. The men of Israel replied to the Hivites, Perhaps you live among us. How can we make a treaty with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Then Joshua asked them, who are you and where do you come from? They replied to him, your servants have come from a faraway land because of the reputation of the Lord your God. For we have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two Amorite kings beyond the Jordan, King Sion of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan, who was in Ashtaroth. So our elders and all the inhabitants of our land told us, take provisions with you for the journey. Go and meet them and say, we are your servants. Please make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was warm when we took it from our houses as food on the day we left to come to you. But see, it is now dry and crumbling. These wineskins were new when we filled them. But see, they are cracked. And these clothes and sandals of ours are worn out from the extremely long journey. The men of Israel took some of their provisions but did not seek the Lord's decision. So Joshua established peace with them and made a treaty to let them live. And the leaders of the community swore an oath to them. Three days after making the treaty with them, they heard that the Gibeonites were their neighbors living among them. So the Israelites set out and reached the Gibeonite cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Kepira, or Kephira, Beeroth, and Kiriath Jerem. But the Israelites did not attack them, because the leaders of the community had sworn an oath to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. Then the whole community grumbled against the leaders. All the leaders answered them, We have sworn an oath to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and now we cannot touch them. This is how we will treat them. We will let them live so that no wrath will fall on us because of the oath we swore to them. They also said, let them live. So the Gibeonites became woodcutters and water carriers for the whole community, as the leaders had promised them. 
Joshua summoned the Gibeonites and said to them, why did you deceive us by telling us you live far away from us, when in fact you live among us? Therefore, you are cursed and will always be slaves, woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. The Gibeonites answered him, it was clearly communicated to your servants that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants, inhabitants of the land before you. We greatly feared for our lives because of you. And that is why we did this. We are, now we are in your hands. Do to us whatever you think is right. This is what Joshua did to them. He rescued them from the Israelites and they did not kill them. On that day, he made them woodcutters and water carriers as they are today for the community and for the Lord's altar at the place he would choose. Today, we read two Psalms, both of them written by David and both of them prayers that the Lord would protect him and rescue him from all who threatened him. Psalm 140, rescue me, Lord, from the evil men. Keep me safe from violent men who plan evil in their hearts. They stir up wars all day long. They make their tongues as sharp as a snake's bite. Viper's venom is under their lips. Protect me, Lord, from the power of the wicked. Keep me safe from violent men who plan to make me stumble. The proud hide a trap with ropes for me. They spread a net along the path and set snares for me. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Listen, Lord, to my cry for help. Lord, my Lord, my strong Savior, you shield my head on the day of battle. Lord, do not grant the desires of the wicked. Do not let them achieve their goals. Otherwise, they will become proud. When those who surround me rise up, May the trouble their lips cause overwhelm them. Let hot coals fall on them. Let them be thrown into the fire, into the abyss, never to rise again. Do not let a slanderer stay in the land. Let evil relentlessly hunt down a violent man. I know that the Lord upholds the just cause of the poor, justice for the needy. Surely the righteous will praise your name. The upright will live in your presence. Psalm 141, Lord, I call on you, hurry to help me. Listen to my voice when I call on you. May my prayer be set before you as incense, the raising of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Lord, set up a guard for my mouth. Keep watch at the door of my lips. Do not let my heart turn to any evil thing or perform wicked acts with evildoers. Do not let me feast on their delicacies. Let the righteous one strike me. It is a faithful act of love. Let him rebuke me. It is oil for my head. Let me not refuse it. Even now my prayer is against the evil acts of the wicked. When their rulers will be thrown off the sides of a cliff, the people will listen to my words, for they are pleasing. As when one plows and breaks up the soil, turning up rocks, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of Sheol. But my eyes look to you, Lord, my Lord. I seek refuge in you. Do not let me die. Protect me from the trap they have set for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.